The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. Welcome to Elite Sports, I'm Chris Viverito. In this program we will learn from professional athletes and amateurs who have reached the top of their game and what it takes to play in the elite level of their sport. We think you'll learn quite a bit from athletes who uh, you might emulate someday. These athletes will tell us their personal stories that led to their success. Today we're talking with Roberto Gallo, a professional soccer player with the Chicago Riot Indoor Soccer Club. Roberto grew up playing soccer as a teenager, played at Lake Park High School in Roselle, Illinois and uh, when he was a freshman and sophomore. Uh, he later went on to play for the UIC Flames where he excelled as a uh, midfielder, I believe, and uh, later transferred to Butler University and played soccer while earning a degree in communications. After college, Roberto played on several professional teams and is now the star defender of the Chicago Riot Indoor Soccer Club. Roberto plays his home games at the Odium and Expo in Villa Park, uh, just a few miles from where he started playing uh, soccer seriously in high school. Roberto, thank you for being here today. Thank you. So, what we want to know about you, we want to know how this all happened. We started out by going to UIC, or going to Lake Park, went to UIC, went to Butler, and now we're playing professional soccer here in the third largest sports market in the country, Chicago. How did we get here? A lot of hard work, a lot of hard work and heartache, actually. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's not 100 percent easy. I mean, a lot of work goes into it. You know, I mean, there are a lot of downs playing because sometimes you get coaches who aren't interested in you or who maybe say you're not what they're looking for. So I just think a lot of persistence and determination and mental strength really is what keeps you going and gets you there. Now, did you start out playing soccer uh, as a youth? Yeah. Um, at four years old, it was actually my mother who put me into soccer. My father played professional soccer in Italy. Um, and then when he came here, he wanted to force it upon us. My mother put me in at four, and after that, that was the only sport I really played. When your mother put you in at four, and was that was that in house, or did you start in house, in -house yeah. right away? Yeah. And how long how long after you started playing in house did you realize that you wanted to start playing more seriously? Um, I would probably say they said from four after I started playing. That was all I walked around with a soccer ball at all times. <laughs> so what was your first travel team or in house or I'm sorry. Uh, Club team. The first club team was the American Eagles, who at the time was based out of Glendale Heights. Okay. And I, I'm not even sure. I believe they're still around, but not as they were before. And this uh, this team, was this what catapulted you towards wanting to play more seriously in high school and go on to college? Yeah, actually, I started to play with the, the Eagles, and I had a couple coaches, and finally my father ended up becoming the coach, and he coached me all the way up until I had went to the team, uh, the Sockers, which is a big club in the Chicagoland area. And that's where you started playing your junior year of high school? 
Yeah, uh, actually, it was the, my sophomore year I played. Sophomore I year. Yeah, yeah. You're in a varsity letter, you're a freshman and sophomore year at Lake Park, Correct. and went on to play for the Sockers. How was it playing for your father? Um, good and tough. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, not only did I hear it on the field, I heard it at home, the drive home. <laughs> so sure, the expectations. The expectations were always <laughs> there. But, you know what, I, to be honest, because of the pressure he had always put on and you know, it really, to play a sport, you have to have mental strength because, like I said, there's a lot of heartache. Coaches don't want you. You have to be able to be strong mentally to, to keep moving on, not to get down on yourself and want to quit. And so him always being tough on me um, really made me want to keep playing. So after this, you moved on to play in college. Correct. And your first spot was UIC, University of Illinois, Chicago for yes. the Flames. You're a midfielder there. This is outdoor soccer, Correct. obviously, at this time. Uh how did you get there? Was that a scholarship? Did you get selected by the team to try out? Yeah, actually, um, my junior and senior year when I played for uh, my club team, because I only did two years of high school, uh, what had happened was we had a game against the, the UIC Flames and the coach had seen me play. That, that's what that whole program was about, was getting looked at by other college coaches. So he had seen me play and I so wanted to... So a showcase of sorts. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to stay in the city. In Chicago, so sure. it was actually a perfect, perfect step for me to get there. So when I had played there, coach said I was, he was interested, and then we met, and then after that I was ready, to, ready to go. And you played two years there, had some great success, yeah. led the team one year uh, in scoring, I believe, or you were uh, second, second leading scorer, yeah. and uh, you made the uh, all all Horizon League second team two years, once there, and then at your next school when you moved on to Butler University. Butler, yeah. Yeah, what brought you to, Br to Butler? Uh, Butler actually was, two of my good friends brought me there. <laughs> they, they were transferring. Buddy connection. Right, they were transferring <laughs> and they said, why don't you come with us? And what really helped me go there, not only was them going, but also Butler was a great school. Yeah. So it made it a lot easier. And you know, again, I was getting a scholarship. So, you know, the scholarship was a means to my education. So I, I used it in both you know, both aspects. And who offered you the scholarship, the coach of the team? The coach, yeah, at UIC and at Butler. Uh -huh. And um, how did that go? How did that come about? Did you meet with them, sit down, have a talk? Yeah, uh, basically what happens is you, you talk to them, they ask if you're interested. Once you're interested, you come down for a visit, they take you out to dinner, and basically kind of schmooze you a little bit, and you, ba you know, they kind of offer you, make you an offer, and, and you, then you make the decision from there. I made the decision with both my parents and we decided that you know that was good for me and they said if you're happy then go ahead it'd be pretty easy you know you got a great school good education you get to hang with your friends and you get to play soccer Correct. how did you do that down there playing soccer how'd you guys uh, do as a team you know what we actually my my junior year we did well we went we went pretty far my senior year we did well we were actually uh, beginning of the season, top 25 in the country, and then we kind of faltered towards the end, but we had a good run at, uh, at the uh, league that year. And that was your second year? My second year, yeah. So after this, you graduated, you got yourself a communications degree from Butler University, yeah. one of the top schools in the Midwest for education, great soccer program, and then started your professional career. Yes. Right. With all that experience, you had to have scouts looking at you. You had to have people coming out. Yeah, I um, I actually had a couple of tryouts. I went to Rochester, uh, had a tryout. They had asked me back. Um, but at the time, my heart really wasn't into going out there, moving away. Um, at the time, I was dating, who is now my wife. I was dating her. She was my girlfriend. And Do you want to say hi? No, yeah. I am now. <laughs> so I didn't want to, I mean, it was hard for me really just to leave her because, you know, it comes to a point where you have to choose, you know, family life or sports and it's something you have, it's a hard decision, but I chose, I chose her. Yeah, very good. And in that professional career, you chose her, you, you spent some time here in, in Chicago playing professionally. You've also gone overseas to Singapore for some professional. Yeah. How yeah. did that go? Uh, it went well. Went out there to Singapore, um, tried out for two teams. Uh, one team asked me to stay and then again came down to the decision at that time when I tried out which was last year um, I had would have to move my wife and my daughter over to Singapore 24 hour plane ride away from everybody and I j just didn't think it was fair to to move her away from her family and move my daughter away from growing up with her cousins and so we made the decision to stay here and that brought you to the Chicago riot right yeah. And before that, you played indoor soccer with 
the Rockford Rampage. Yes. Out in Rockford. That was just uh, at 8 and 9, right? 2008 and 9? Yes. That was it, right? Just the one season? Uh, uh, it was two seasons with Rockford. Two seasons. Yeah. Okay. And I played with Rockford also with Jeff Kraft, the coach of the Riot. Mm -hmm. um, I played with him. We were AISL, which was a semi-pro, and then played with him for four years. Then we made the jump up to the professional uh, league, and now we're still together today. That's right. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of people on that team are from the Rockford Rampage. Uh, we're going to take a break and be back with more information and questions for Roberto Gallo from the Chicago Professional Soccer Team. Thank you. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back. This is Elite Sports, and we're sitting at Michael Anthony's Pizzeria in Villa Park, Illinois, with Roberto Gallo, the defenseman for the Chicago Riot Professional Indoor Soccer Club. And we were just talking about how you got to be a professional and how those things were all put together, the long, long hard work, long, years and years and years of hard work, dedication, and mental toughness that it takes to be a professional. You said you started out by going to college. You first went because you wanted to play soccer and you wanted to be close to home. Then you moved on to a place where you thought you could get a better education mm -hmm. and uh, also be with your friends. But at the same time, there's a lot of hard work and time and knowledge and edu educating yourself about not only the sport, but just about the subjects you have at school in order to be you know, an intelligent person who could go to school, get into the school, Excel. Tell us about that process, about how you you know got into into college and and started to play soccer. How did you get there? Well, like you said, I mean, uh, apart from the athletic side of it, um, academically in high school was always a big thing that my parents instilled in me to do well in school. Because you know, if, if you do, if you're a great soccer player, but your grades were no good or you didn't do good on ACTs, a lot of schools would overlook you. So I mean, really, it started athletically. Athletics as well as academics. You know, you really had to push yourself to show that you could you could handle playing soccer and also being able to do your school work. Because otherwise, a lot of schools, if you're not eligible, you're really no good to a school if you can't stay eligible. Is it difficult to uh, get into these schools, UIC? Um, you know, UIC for what I was going for. Um, yeah, I mean, it took some hard work, but Butler was actually harder to get into. And you know, growing up, really, I didn't know what schools were good. I just knew I wanted to live in the city. So mm -hmm. when the butler came up and my friend brought about it to me and I started to look at the actual school and, and the soccer part of it, but even the school was just so good that I started to open my eyes to understand that pro professional might not be in the cards. So it mm -hmm. might be for my benefit to get a good school. So when I do go for a job, they look at the school, they look at the background, they can see, oh, he went to a good school. He also did it while he was also playing soccer. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of a lot of employers take that into consideration. You can handle a big workload, and you know it's, it's beneficial for them to have someone like that. Sure, and not only that, but it seems like uh, going to school and playing soccer at the same time would require some help from people within the system, coaches, yeah. the teachers. How was that? Yeah, you know what? Um, at both schools, UIC and Butler, um, you know, we had actually my freshman year at UIC. It was mandatory. You had to go. You had to do two hours a day. In a, in a rec room of studies. You had to sign in and dad wanted to make sure to get you on the right page because as a freshman you really don't know what you're, what you're really up against until you actually get, get thrown into it. So I mean they really instilled doing well in school. So I, it was, I mean it, it just, they just really stressed the importance of academics besides just the athletics. What other kind of support structure do they have for athletes at, co at the college level? Um, well I know that we, we had tutors. Uh, tutors from whether it be on your team or whether it be from uh, people from other, other sports. And what they would do is if you needed help or whatever your major was, they would take people from your major who were not, not necessarily in athletics, but just because we're always around other athletic people, they, they bring them together and say, you know, could you help them? And they would give us extra help if we needed it. How was your coach at UIC? My coach at UIC, you know, I enjoyed him. He was actually he was a European, thick accent. Um, <laughs> He was 
tough, tough, tough coach. But, good start uh, for a man in communications. Good, yes, <laughs> very good. So he, um, but he, you know, again, he really stressed, you know, doing well academics because he knew that, you know, not, again, professional soccer or yeah. professional sports is not in the cards for everyone. And also you had to be eligible, otherwise you wouldn't be able to play. So he was on you. He was like a drill instructor, yeah, I imagine. Was, yeah. yeah. And what about Butler? Butler, uh, same thing, same thing. Who was your coach there? Uh, Joseph so he, so Chaki. Okay. Joseph Chaki. He was it was same thing. He um, especially Butler because academically they they were a really good school. They really stressed um, actually academics a little bit more than than the sports. Mm -hmm. And so in turn, it, you know, with the coach putting pressure on it, and with the school in general putting pressure on doing well academically, it was really instilled in us to do well academically and put um, you know school first. It's a pretty intense schedule playing soccer at a university like Butler, right? Yeah. And yeah. the study schedule, you got all of your teammates, you guys study together? Yeah. We, you know, we did some studying together. We, we had to in order to, you know, we keep each other in line and try, you know, make sure did you finish this homework, did you, just, just to kind of make sure you didn't fall behind or I didn't fall behind. I bet these guys are, you know, lifelong friends now. Some of these guys. Yeah, um, actually, most of them. I um, last weekend stood up in a, a friend of mine's wedding. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he we went to school at UIC and Butler. I mean, we were friends before that from soccer. But okay. Went to school together, and yeah, stood up in his wedding. He stood up in mine. And what do you guys do as soccer players? What's a traditional wedding deal? Do you guys, when the bride and groom come down from the church down the steps, and everybody's throwing rice? All, you, all the soccer players, the wedding party, they stand there with red cards no. over the, you know, what do you guys do? Yeah, no, no, I mean, you know, it's funny is, you know, now that we're older, you know, turning into men, we, you know, we bust each other's chops about things that happen in college that no one else knows about. So, I mean, it's just, you know what, it, again, it, soccer was just an avenue to academics and also just to build friendships, you know, to last a lifetime. Mm, that's great. The backstories have got to be very interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll save those for a different interview. Uh, <laughs> but for right now, we're talking about how you bridge that gap. Also, you went, you did this, you got all these guys together. Uh, you did, you succeeded in your success uh, in your uh, education by getting the degree, and then it came time to move on to the pro. What did you find out was different right away about transitioning from college to professional? Um, college, the competitiveness is the first thing, you mm -hmm. know, because guys are fighting for jobs. Sure. You know, everyone's trying to everyone's trying to play. Everyone wants to be, you know, an asset to the team. Mm -hmm. So you notice the practices are, are a lot more intense. You know, guys get into it, which is normal in any sports because everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to be part of the team. But the first thing I noticed right away uh, was competitiveness. Did you, any of the guys that you went to college with like move up with you into the professional competition trying to get in yeah um to college with yeah a um, couple guys i did uh played for the fire some mm -hmm. some actually one of a friend of mine got called up to the national team hmm. um a friend that i grew up with uh that i played youth soccer with that actually plays for the la galaxy oh yeah now so i mean uh, you know a lot of the guys that i play with especially at the soccer club when um, really moved up and took the next next uh, step. What about in the MISL? Do you have any former teammates in the MISL other than the guys you played for on the rampage? Um, in the MISL, no. Um, most of the guys in MISL are just new friends that I've made, you know, from from my first year till now, and you know, just building camaraderie with them has been has been great. Reminds me of college. <laughs> yeah, you guys seem to have a good uh, camaraderie going around. Yeah. I see a lot of emotion. On the field together, you guys seem to have a great rapport. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know the whole team. We're all hard workers. We all we're all there to win. I mean, we want the best for each other. We get along, and I think it shows when we're around each other. Not even on the field, but off the field. You know, and also we took some bus trips uh, a couple weeks ago to Omaha and to Missouri. That had to be fun. And, oh, it was fun. You know, <laughs> I mean, it reminded me of college taking bus trips. I mean, that's what we sure. did in college. So it was great, great to you know be together and really start to bond off the field yeah and that playing for Jeff Kraft now two years in a row that's got to feel good a little bit like college as well because you've got that you know somebody you've been around somebody who knows you knows how you play um, uh, he's got to be a lot of help yeah no you know the consistency with Jeff like I said I played four, I did four years with him AISL two Rockford now one with Chicago I mean it's almost seven or eight years that we've known each other and he's I mean he's a great coach I you know we've always got along with him and there's a great respect you know for Jeff that's a, Jeff's a great guy and uh, runs you guys pretty hard, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> well, that's uh, we're going to take a break now and come back in a few minutes with Roberto Gallo. We're going to get a little bit further inside his head and talk about his 
a few personal items, a few family items, and a little bit about what he's into around town. Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is my teenage friend Fred. Rad! <laughs> hey pal, you want to pay attention to the road? Relax, man, I got it. Look, my man, if your bad driving gets me killed, you better hope you die too, or I will haunt you silly. And I'm not just going to float over your bed like, Woo! I'm going to be making a more annoying noise, like, ah! And instead of wearing those long white robes, I think I'll wear something more form-fitting and upsetting. The other ghost will look and be like, wow, we've never seen that before. Welcome back to Elite Sports. We're still here at Michael Anthony's in Villa Park. I'm sitting with Roberto Gallo of the Chicago Riot Indoor Soccer Club. We've gone over your career from really starting out in in in-house leagues, going through the club leagues all the way into high school, playing, continuing to play club in the showcase leagues, moving on to play college soccer at uh, two great schools at UIC and Butler, and a little bit about your professional career. And, Something that always happens to an athlete is they, they get into that high school age and they start to see it, start to realize that they've got an opportunity to play, to keep playing. They know they can, they want to, and they've got to make that choice. Do they go to college or do they just go to the professional game? You chose college. What do you think, you know, what do you think is the better route to go, college or just pro? Well, um, for you know, for me, and I think for a lot of guys, I've seen I've seen guys go straight to the pros. I've seen them get injured. I've seen coaches not, maybe not like their style of play, didn't fit it to their system. Yeah. You know, for me, it was go to college, get your degree. You don't know what can happen, whether it be injury, whether it be again not making it. It's just nice to have a good education, and not only that, even for yourself, just to be educated. Mm -hmm. and not only that, but when you get there, you're expect if you get to the pros, you are expected to play, Correct. and you're expected to be ready to play. You go to college, and you you kind of get mentored through it, right? Yeah, you know, as a freshman, you got the seniors that kind of help you through it, kind of explain to you how everything goes. Where in college, you know, like I said before, with uh, I'm sorry, like in uh, pros, like I said right. before, the competitiveness. I mean, there, there are guys that will mentor you, but then there's also guys that, you know, this is a job, this is my job. Sure. You, fig you know, you can figure it out. And at each level, the speed is different. High school, college, pro. You skip that one in the middle, and you got to jump. Right. It's a big jump, you know, and, you know, certain certain players, you know, do make the jump, and they can make it. But, you know, a lot of them, a lot of players, you know, especially in this country, and even overseas, they you'll see that they make that jump, and then they, they start to fade because whether they can't keep up or whether it's just – too, too overwhelming or too big of an experience at one time. Hmm. All right, well, now I'm going to put you on the spot. We've talked a lot about your career and how things happen. I, I, I want to I get down to the, to the good details here. Okay. I want to know about your most famous, or I'm sorry, your favorite. I want to know about your most favorite soccer story, whether it was a youth, college, pro, whatever it was. What, when you think about what makes you laugh, what, what, what always brings a smile to your face? Um, my favorite would actually be uh, actually a whole year. It was my was year. 16 years old, <laughs> actually 15, uh, just turned 16, and we, I got, we got brought together uh, as a soccer club, and now the friends that, like I said before, guys that I stood up to their weddings, they stood up to my wedding, we all came to the team at the same time. Um, the team had just got uh, invited to a tournament, a oh. the Dallas Cup. Dallas Cup. Yeah, we weren't even supposed to be into it. It's a big international youth uh, tournament, and they get people from South America, from Europe. We weren't so even, it was a road trip, too. Yeah, we weren't even supposed to be in it. Mm -hmm. um, How'd you get there? Well, we ended up being in there because a team from the Czech Republic couldn't make it. So we got, All right, we got you guys fit in. the uniform. Yeah, so we got invited <laughs> in. There's an opening. And uh, <laughs> we actually were underdogs, and we yeah. ended up winning – the whole, the whole thing that year. You're kidding. Yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing. We, oh, you know, my goodness. We'd be teams, Cinderella story. Yeah, really. <laughs> teams from Mexico, teams from over, from England. It was just it was an amazing experience, and that brought us closer. And, again, those guys that I'm on the team with. That had to be tremendously gratifying. Oh, absolutely. It was unbelievable. You know, there was no expectations. We just went out there and played. Yeah, right? Well, I'm sure there were some expectations, though, like maybe from Papa back at home. Well, yeah. Actually, Papa was there. <laughs> yeah, he, he showed. I mean, he came of on the trip. Of course, yeah, he, he was there for it. every yeah. kick, every punt, yeah. everything. Right? Yeah. Tell us about that. Your there's there, there's a legacy in your family, right? Yeah. Soccer legacy. Right. My father grew up in uh, in Italy, southern part of Italy, and you know, started to move up the ranks. Played, you know, yeah, the mainlanders. The mainland, All right. Yeah. 
started to play uh, professionally. But again, he actually met a girl, which was my mom, and yeah. ended up moving to, to America instead of pursuing his career in Italy. And he played a little bit here in uh, the States too, right? Correct. He actually, you know, he actually, he came here, he played here in like within what is now the Metro League. He played that, he played at his time, it was, I believe it was also the Metro League. Mm -hmm. But he actually blew out both of his knees in indoor. Oh, really? So he, yeah. So he, when Both I first started knees. playing indoor, he got nervous. I'll him. bet. Watch those knees. Did he have you doing all sorts of exercises yeah, to strengthen yeah, no, that? I, he always just told me, <laughs> keep your core strong. <laughs> keep your core strong. That, that's absolutely right. So what can you tell, uh, what's your best advice for young players? You know, they don't have a legacy. They don't have, but, uh, you know, they want to play. What's your best advice for achieving the top of the game? Yeah, my best advice is, you know, when, when you're young, you're playing it because you love it. Then all of a sudden it starts to turn out because it's competitive mm -hmm. but sometimes along the way you may lose that the fun part of it sure i mean sometimes you can't forget that because once you start to lose that you, it's not fun anymore mm -hmm. and i think it's always it's important just to make just remember that you're playing why you started mm -hmm. and i think everything else kind of falls in place definitely absolutely so it falls into place and you become a midfielder you become a defender you become a goalkeeper you're a defender Tell us about what it's like to be a defender. Be a defender? <laughs> well, I started, like you said, I was a midfielder outdoor. Mm -hmm. I always played midfield my whole life. and then Which I, is much different as a midfielder in indoor. outdoor than it is an in indoor, right? right? Yeah, it's much different. Mm -hmm. So and then when I came to uh, start playing indoor, we, uh, you know, my, my, my job is basically to make sure that the forwards hate playing against me and yeah. that they don't score. And how do you do that? <laughs> I, you, you just play, you know, not, not rough them up, but you, you let them know you're there. Yeah. Let them know you're yeah. there. Let them know it's not going to be an easy game. Yeah. Now, are you on the same defensive line with, uh, um, with, a, with a big guy with the riot? Or are um, you the big guy? <laughs> actually, on my line, I, yeah, I'm the big guy. You're the big guy. Line. Yeah. <laughs> or really, you'd be pushing them around there for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, when, you, when it came to um, when it came to the, uh, the the defensive maneuvers that you have in in the game of uh, uh, in the indoor game, compared to playing with uh, as a midfielder in, in, in outdoor soccer, you know what skills cross over from from being a midfielder to being a defender? Um, the, the skills that cross over is in indoor. You have to be good with your feet because it's such a small, tight space. Mm -hmm. So even though you're a defender, you have to be able to. Pass, drill. You know, I mean, you have to be good with your feet because you have so much pressure. It's so tight, and I think being a midfielder, I always got a lot of touches on the ball. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, being in a defender and indoor, it actually helped me out work to my advantage. Is this one of the reasons that you that you made the switch to indoor? You know what? I made the switch to indoor because actually a friend of mine played for, you know, Coach Kraft, and after that, Kraft told me, "Why don't you stay long and just play indoor?" And then I, <laughs> the rest was history. It's a family game, isn't say, it? Yeah. I mean, all the way from your youth, your father, now here with all your friends, everybody on the ride. It's a, uh, it's a great, great place to be, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. And yeah. well, what's your most favorite thing about the game itself, all around? I, you know what? When I play, it's, mm -hmm. I, it, I'm, it's like I disappear. I forget everything. <laughs> you know, whatever outside pressures, and just I just forget. And it, and it just, I feel good while I'm out there. Are you the Are you the jokester on the team, or is it somebody else? Um, we got a lot of jokesters on our team. Anywhere <laughs> from Freddie, Gann, Luke, Eric Lukin, Novi. I mean, Jeff Ritchie. I mean, I could go. I mean, there's there's not that many serious guys. Novi on. seems like the guy who's going to be playing a lot of practical jokes. You know, oh, I, if I were you, I'd watch out for Novi. Yeah, 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 definitely. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you for watching Elite Sports. You can watch all of our programs at www.vpnettv.com. A special thank you to Michael Anthony's Restaurant in Villa Park for allowing us to film our program here today. If you're a young athlete with visions of becoming a great athlete, remember to learn from those who have had successes before you, such as Roberto Gallo. Uh, his story may not be the same as yours, but someday you could be telling us your story about how you achieved the top level of your game. We hope that happens to you. Until then, I'm Chris Viverito, and you've been watching Elite Sports. See you next time. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? Sorry, they didn't, we didn't have any cannolis.